not, not even a single doubt among the nationalists of the time that we are going to make a secular democratic republic. In fact, ever since 1920s, we had this uh, certainty in the freedom struggle that we are going to make a secular democratic republic. And we were so certain that religion is not going to be the center for determining the political identity of India. And this, we remain stern even when a part of the nation or, or the part of the building nation carved out of that unit and became, uh, and, and went for becoming a so-called Muslim nation. Even then, and if, at this point it would also be ideal to look into the politics of partition a little bit. If we look at the history of, of that times, and even in the furious debates by, by Jinnah, uh, explaining the two-nation theory, we can see that there was nothing in those debates which was against Hindus or Hinduism in particular. It was more of a political divide than a religious divide. It was, it was the political twist, it was the political twist between maybe the Congress and Muslim League and the lack of farsightedness or maybe the hurry of that times, maybe, is resulted in the division of India and Pakistan. And nothing of the times will, it, it can be, it can be said with utmost certainty that, that it was the origin of the communal divide in India was more political than religious. So the, 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 my, my only point uh, in say, saying this at this point is this, that India has been living with so much of religions and irrespective of, of the differences in religions, we have been living so peacefully and it is also, also possible even now. And the communal divide that has been happening has always a political overture or political undercurrent in it. And if we see it, we can see that, you know, living together with irrespective of all religions is uh, always a possible option in India. And religions have been, many religions have been born in India and many, many religions came to in India and uh, all these religions have been having a natural evolution in India. And therefore, when we thought about secularism in India, we had, we, we had to avoid the Western notion of secularism. The Western notion of secularism which stands for irreligiousness or absence of religion or a complete divorce of state and religion, we did not take that, that model of secularism. We had to invent a new secularism for India. What was that? India, secularism in India is a profusion of religions which states patronizing any, which state not patronizing any of them. And there are four basic tenets for secularism in India. And one is, there is nothing like a state religion. There is no state religion. And every citizen in India has a right to practice and profess his religion. And this, it is the duty of the state to protect his fundamental rights, including his right to practice and profess his religion. And, and last, there shall be no discrimination by the state on the basis of religion or language. And, and if we look further, like secularism at that point was the only plea, was the only antidote to prevent all kinds of problems that can arise by casteism, communalism, linguism and religion. We must always, we must always keep the ideal of the unity of India and the political and social equality of a people to whatever group, religion or province they might belong. So secularism was also an instrument for re for emphasizing or reinstating social and political equality of the nation. At this point, it would also be necessary to look into the debates of, social, uh, debates of constitutional assembly on what secularism means and the right, and how the right to religious practice in India shall come into being. And there were strong debates among the constitutional assembly members as to how should, the, what should the extent of religious freedom of Indians should be. And the, the debate was between the right to worship and the right to practice and profess religion. Right to worship is a narrow outlook and right to practice and profess religion is a more broader freedom. Right to practice, right to worship would only mean that you can practice your religion in your private sphere. But right to practice and profess religion is a much greater freedom. And perhaps those argued for uh, right to practice and profess religion, that those argue for a greater freedom for religion were more con convincing enough in the constant assembly and we had such a broader right. And now let me look, 
go look into the issues of conversions and reconversions and forced conversions and now jihad, whatever is happening all around. And if you look in, if you look into this or, or, all this conversion debate, we can see that there is nothing in the constitution which prevents any individual for being an atheist or to practice any religion or to give up any religion and to take up any other religion. So if voluntarily done, nothing in the, there is nothing in the constitution that prevents any individual from practicing or professing any particular religion. And I, if, I may, if I may go back to one particular incident which was with much discussed in the recent past, which was a post conversion in Agra. And it was, what is to be noted out in, at that point is that if, if the people, people were being shown state, you know, state, you know, state entitlements like ID cards and things like that. ID cards and ration for, for inviting them to one particular religion. What is, what, is, what is clear at this point? It is not a question of religion, it is clearly a failure of state missionary to, to, give, part, to give entitlements to a particular community. So, if, I'm, if somebody asks me who has done the greatest disservice to religion and secularism in this country, it is by the institutions of democracy itself. It is by, or more clearly, it is by the political parties of this country. They have done more disservice to Indian secularism and India's religion. And if we give, and, and the operation of Indian secularism, I mean Indian democracy has been, has been always linked to religion. It was, it was never, perhaps religion is the most politicized institution in India than politics itself. So, what, what, we, what we can see is that, see is that take, take any political, political party in the country, we can see of, Openly or you know, openly or you know, or hiddenly, you can, you can see which which religion or caste they are identified with. So it is like this is this is really a sad thing that we can have have in a largest democracy in this country, in this world. And then, and I would like to point out uh, uh, something from J J that J P Narayan has said once. It is only when religion is used to serve political and social, political and socio-economic interests that communal violence violence erupts. And he also suggested at one point of time that there can be an article incorporated in the constitution prohibiting the use of religious institutions for political purposes or for setting up of political organizations on religious basis. But if we look at the Indian politics, always religion and politics is all interconnected. And let me not look into the positives of so demerits of Aam Admi Party, but definitely parties like Aam Admi Party with a bit more secular outfits and uh, outfit has to come, ha come has to come to Indian politics, and also it is only when we we get away from the world bank politics that we, we India can march to progress.